a place further than the universe aired in 2018 and it's from studio madhouse nani who knew these guys were kicking out and about ever since they like did one punch man i guess but i guess that explains why the animation is so top quality but either way let's get into the plot of the show it's basically about four girls who want to go to antarctica and each one of them experiences some sort of life-changing journey on the way and surprise surprise i watched the show because i heard it was good i pretty much do that for everything i watch but specifically about the show i really love the concept of their them going on this sort of life-changing journey to this place that's like beyond the universe as the title implies those type of shows and stories always have this sort of vibe to them so i said you know why not let's give this a try and Wow, how the hell did this show go unnoticed for so long? Not just by me, but by like everybody in the community. Like, this show deserves so much more recognition. So if you haven't already watched it, go watch it, then come back and watch it and complete this review. So let's get straight into it. Starting off with the story, the concept is honestly amazing. Like I mentioned, it's the main reason I got into this show. And like I mentioned, these type of shows also have a vibe to them. And this show absolutely captures that. As the title implies, this show is just so magical. And there's something really beautiful and dreamlike about this whole um, sort of anime. And I just, I don't know, I can't put my finger on it, but I love it so much. And like I mentioned before, um, anything that seems dreamlike to me is honestly like already in the upper echelon for me. So personally, that already gets this like a, at least a 7 out of 10. And honestly, this whole show was just so captivating. It felt like I was there with them. And not many shows that made me feel like this. You know, I don't really get that immer immersed into most shows. But oh man, this show is truly worth a watch. Once again, go watch it if you haven't already. And it also inspired me personally to go on a journey like this. Because per I don't think I've been on like a journey with friends or something to some other sort of country. You know, it's supposed to be like a life-changing journey. So now that I watch this, I'll definitely add that to my bucket list. And once again, another thing. Um, not many shows change me in that sort of way so this show really truly impacted me deeply and i feel like this could also be more impactful for others depending on your experience you know this show is not like attack on titan or something where it's about people fighting beasts it's supernatural and whatnot these shows are realistic so i feel like the more you can relate to the situation the more impactful a story can be so if you had already gone on some sort of journey like this or you long to go on a journey like this then i feel like you would like the show even more and i can completely understand if someone give this a 10 out of 10 even though i personally won't in terms of themes i really like the themes of friendship that they explored i think that was amazing that's the main theme and i think i mentioned in another review as well that most animes and whatnot explore the theme of friendship but I, this show is completely about it and they probably do it the best out of them all there's also the themes of letting go of grief and whatnot. I think this theme is also beautiful. I did not expect them to uh, tackle this theme in the show, uh, show, but I'm pleasantly surprised. Speaking of guilt, I really love the ending. The ending is honestly perfect. I don't think they could have ended in any sort of other way. And it, when I saw um, Shiraze open up the laptop and saw all her emails pop up, it generally brought a tear down my cheek. It was so beautiful. And in terms of cons, I don't have any cons. Like I said, this show is just honestly amazing. But if I were to point out something, I feel like the first half could definitely be improved. It, it, is, it is a little bit boring in like the first two episodes. So they could have rearranged the story structure a bit more so that they spend less time planning for Antarctica and spend more time, you know, actually at Antarctica. But I don't mind it being this way either. So onto characters, I feel like all four of our main characters are all interesting in their own way. They're all unique, all relatable, and they all feel like real people. And they're all their whole dynamic is just so cute. I just love it entirely. I think that they couldn't have really gone about it any other way. So let's look at each of them individually. First, we with Shirazi. I think Shirazi is definitely my favorite. She's easily the best written out of them all because she has an actual like life-changing journey and her whole reason and purpose of being there. And her character arc is honestly perfect, especially when she cut her hair off towards the end and gave her laptop away. That was just so heartfelt. I love that. I just love scenes where people are able to let go of their grief. And then Yuzuki's arc is also amazing. I love her thing about finding friends and being able to actually relate to someone aside from a business sort of perspective. So I think that her character arc was amazing. Hinata, however, I liked her character arc, but I think her she was a bit rushed they could have definitely spent a bit more time especially because the whole thing about her track and field stuff didn't come up until like when they were actually resolving her arc so if they had built up to that previously then this would have 
uh, being a little less rushed in my opinion. And then lastly, we have Kimari, and I feel like Kimari is definitely the worst written out of them all. Not saying that she's bad, like I mentioned, each one of them is interesting, but Kimari is definitely underdeveloped. She doesn't really have any sort of character arc other than I want to live my youth, so had they built something uh, for her as well, then I would have probably liked it even more. And honestly, the side characters are honestly amazing. The uh, Toto, their leader, Shira's mom, that one guy who's always drunk all the time. I love them all. I think they're all great and they really support the main cast effectively. And also one thing that really surprised me is that this show is a mostly female cast. Like there's only one or two guy members and they don't even get that much development either. The thing that mostly uh, surprised me about this is that I've never heard about this. Like going into the show, I did not know that it was a mostly female cast. And that really says something, you know. I. I don't really like it when shows have to advertise their identities like oh I got we got like a 90% black cast or like two gay members in our um, cast it usually just goes for a testament that they can't really write that well and they're instead re uh, resorting to marketing like identity politics politics instead but I mean that's not always the case but usually it is so when something like this comes around but they did none of that it really surprised me so i definitely have to give a hand at them and being bold enough to market this without um some sort of feminist movement uh, involved behind it So let's get on to the animation and it's honestly stunning to watch like what do you expect other than from studio madhouse it's so surprising because it's not like super fluid movement like one punch man it's mostly still but the art like the actual illustrations are so beautiful i've always wondered what makes actual illustrations beautiful considering they don't really do anything they don't really detail themselves more than any other anime and i'm thinking it's probably the lighting and the color composition when you combine those two perfectly it can really look like a movie and i feel like that's what they did here and the animation honestly just makes me feel the, feel like I'm in the moment. It looks so beautiful. When you see like the sunrise scenes in Antarctica, it looks so good. Like it's almost like real life. And I just honestly think the art style is so perfect. It definitely fits. I don't think any other art style would have gone for this sort of show. You know, they could have done like an Attack on Titan thick lines or Demon Slayer style art style, but they didn't go for that. And they went for a more simpler, something more akin to like a silent voice. And I think it definitely fits for the tone of the show. So onto the soundtrack, well, let's start with the opening and ending. I think both of them are amazing. Usually shows, especially shows that are more interpersonal, don't really have that great of an opening or ending, but these one, this one definitely does. I would say I prefer the ending a little more, but they're both honestly great. I also really love how they use the ending in the episodes, like how they would mix in some of the ending to the ending scenes. It definitely makes the scenes a lot more impactful. I definitely do love it when, they, when animes do that instead of just abruptly cutting to an ending song. So aside from that, the background tracks are a bit basic. They're your usual piano tunes and whatnot, something you'd normally find in like a slice of life type of show. So they could have definitely improved it, made it a bit more recognizable than other sort of background tracks. But despite that, I still feel like the soundtrack's honestly perfect just because it fits the theme of the show so well. And there's not really much that I can really pick apart except from the background tracks. So I guess that's it with soundtrack. Let's move on to my overall thoughts. So in conclusion, what I really like about the show is that it's just so magical, the characters are all amazing and the animation stunning, as well as the soundtrack just being perfect. But a few things that really hold it back are the story structure, as well as Kimari not being that developed, and the filler OST are pretty basic. And this leads me to a final score of an 8 out of 10. Honestly, I probably would have wanted to give this a 9 out of 10. The only thing really holding it back, I feel like, is definitely the story structure, and I know I mentioned in the story part that it's not that big of a deal but now that i think about it it actually kind of is it made the enjoying experience a little bit harsh at the beginning i wasn't really too into it so had they fixed that i probably would have been hooked on this whole anime of episode two instead of episode five every once in a while you find an underground anime that absolutely entrances you in its story and truly changes you as a person deep down and a place further than the universe is definitely that one for me thanks for watching